Genius Webinar 1. My name is Tim Sasserchi, and I'm going to describe to you today how to connect the R2100 serial LED scanner to our PLC, which is the Allen Bradley Micrologix 1400, and we're going to be using a Device Master serial to Ethernet converter to do this. There are four items I really want to talk about today. The first is, of course, the R2100 LED scanner. We're going to take a look and see how that works and see how to connect serially to it and connect that to the Micrologix PLC using the Device Master. Secondly, the um, R2100, you're going to see in the PLC some of the data and you're going to see how you can detect objects up to 8 meters away. Thirdly, the Device Master uses a program called Port Vision and this program is going to be used to configure the network settings. So IP address, subnet mask, and gateway. We're going to talk about that. And fourthly, we're going to look at the programming. So what do you have to do in the PLC and in the web interface to get the Device Master to work properly? All right, the Device Master selection process really is the first thing you want to look at. And we actually sell multiple versions. We sell a Device Master with terminals. We sell a Device Master with a DB9. We sell also a four-port Device Master unit. Additionally, you can buy them with different protocols. So, for example, um, Ethernet IP or Profinet or Modbus TCP. Because the R2100 has a serial cable that you can purchase and it's got a DB9 connector on it, I opted for the DB9 version. And I also am going to use a one-port one so you can see it selected here. Secondly, the Device Master uses Port Vision for configuration. It's a super easy tool that we're going to show you here in a, in a minute, and uh, that's going to be used to set the IP address. And then, of course, configuration of the device is done using the web interface. So you just set your network settings, put the IP address into the web browser, and you'll connect to it. The R2100 is a true time-of-flight scanner used in many applications including navigation, collision avoidance. It has 11 beams, each with an 8 degree separation, giving you a total coverage of 88 degrees. Max distance, 4 to 8 meters depending on the size and the um, type of target that you have in front of you. There are a few components that you want to consider purchasing when you do this. First, of course, is the R2100 itself. This is demonstrating the RS-232 connectivity, so of course get the R2 version. And then you want the RS-232 cable. This is going to make the plug and play from the R2100 directly to the Device Master very simple. M12 on one side, DB9 on the other. And then of course you got the power cable, M12 and then flying leads. You can get many colors and connector options as well for this. All right, the PLC, the PC, and the Device Master will all be connected together on Ethernet using one of our Ethernet switches. We have unmanaged and managed versions, and you can see the picture here. I've got two. I'm actually using in this demonstration the five-port unit, and uh, we also have standard and extended temperature models. The Micrologix 1400, which we're using in this demonstration, is often used in small self-contained control systems where you don't need a whole lot. And it's going to be using RS Logix 500 8.1 or above. In my case, I think I'm using version 12. Um, and we're going to demonstrate basically class 3 messaging. This can be either PCCC or Ethernet IP. And we're going to upload and download the program using RS-232 and we're going to drop the data in from Device Master over Ethernet. Let's go through the wiring of all the components in our system. First thing you want to do is, of course, power them all up. Okay, so the Device Master, R2100, Ethernet switch, and possibly the PLC all connected via 24-volt DC. And then you also want to connect the R2100 to Device Master using the cable that we described a couple minutes ago. So it's got the M12 on one side, DB9 on the other, plug and play. And now we want to connect all the Ethernet devices together. This is the Device Master, the Ethernet switch, the PLC, and the PC. The only really the reason I need to connect the PC 
to the, uh, the devices is to use the port vision software that we're going to talk about in a second to configure the device master. And then I got my serial cable from my PLC to my PC so I can do the upload and the download. Yes, you can do this over Ethernet. I just like the uh, simplicity of doing it over the RS-232 port. All right, the Ethernet network configuration for the device master is using a program called Port Vision DX. Super simple. I would make sure that the PC is already set up and ready to go. For example, 192.168.1.34. My PLC is set to .50, and I want my device master to be .249. It doesn't matter what the IP address currently is for a device master. We can change it and see it. So install the software. Hit scan. On the bottom, you'll find the device will appear. It's got a little green check mark by it. It will end in, for example, in this case, device.67. You'll double click on it. You're going to put in your IP address, subnet mask, and gateway, and then apply changes. The Ethernet settings will automatically be changed, and you'll be ready to go for your configuration of your device. The actual configuration of the device master is going to be done using a web interface and we're going to talk about that shortly. The R2100 has a very simple RS-232 serial protocol. You send 5 bytes in a command and you get 50 bytes response. If you don't send a command, the R2100 will do nothing and will send you no information. You could set a max, let's say, pull rate of 20 milliseconds but we don't suggest this. Uh, the, the beams won't update that fast anyway. Internally, we suggest no faster than 50 milliseconds. Baud rate is fixed. You cannot change it. 115, 200, 8, none, 1. And then also you can see the command here. So the 5 byte command I've got here labeled in hex by byte. DE 01055583 and then the 50 byte response. It's got a little header on it, so a four byte header, which is that 01DE3211, and then here comes the beam information. You're going to get the two bytes, which is the one integer uh, distance information. I have labeled here D0, and you get the two bytes, which is the strength of the beam information, which I have labeled here E0, and then it just repeats. So beam 0, beam 1, beam 2, beam 3, all the way through beam 11. Just that simple. Okay, the configuration of the device master uh, on the serial side, on the Ethernet IP side, is simply done using a web interface. Just make sure your PC is still in the same subnet and you're connected to the device master via Ethernet. So you can see I just put the IP address into the web browser um, bar and then out pops, let's say, the configuration for the device master. What I'm doing here is configuring the first serial port. Okay. So I've, I've configured the serial port settings, RS-232, 115, 200, 891. And then also, I'm taking out all serial packet identification on the right. You can see where it says STX none, ETX none, PLC, STX, ETX none. It's because in the response, there is no byte that's unique for a, a prefix or a suffix. Okay? Well, all we're going to use is time. So we're going to break the packets up or recognize the packets based on at least a 30 millisecond gap between, between the packets. You can see my timer here. I just got to make sure it's bigger. So in this case, my timer in the PLC is 500 milliseconds. So every 500 milliseconds, I send a new command. And um, that's well more than the 30 milliseconds. And uh, I should be good to go. That's all you got to do. Okay, let's go over the Ethernet IP configuration of the device master. So we need to set the transfer method to and from the PLC. We're going to send a message instruction to send the command from the PLC to the device master and onto the R2100. That's where the TX from PLC transfer method gets set to write message. And then the response, we're going to write directly into the PLC memory. So the RX to PLC transfer method becomes write to tag slash file. Now we're going to enter the IP address of the PLC itself. We saw that from a previous slide, 192.168.1.50. And now because we did write to tag, we need to specify what is the tag we're going to write to. So in this case, we're going to write to 
N51 colon zero. We put a pound there because it is a micrologix. And then the size, I put 75. We know that the response is 50. I just need a size or a file that's bigger than that. And that's what I did. So there's 75 bytes each, just in case. And then the last thing is, the only thing I want to check here is the uh, PLC5 uh, uh, TXMS byte first. I noticed that the byte order in the R2100 wasn't exactly compatible with the Micrologix PLC. So by hitting this check mark here, I can flop the bytes around and put them in the right order so that my integers come out correctly. Let's go over the ladder logic in the PLC. This is the RS Logics 500. It just takes three rungs, and I want to go over each rung one at a time. All right, let's just go over the first rung. It's very simple. We're just loading the command in that we will send using the message instruction. So integer one. N50 colon zero is just the sequence number. We put a one in there. It really isn't used any further than that. N50 colon one is just our length. We know it's five bytes, so I'm putting a number five in there. Pretty simple. And then N50 colon two, three, and four, this is our serial command. Two bytes per integer. Okay, so DE01, if I convert that to a signed integer, is a minus 8703. That goes into N50 colon two. And N50 colon 3 is 0559. That converts to 1369. And then N50 colon 4 converts to 8300. All you really have to do is you don't have to know what the conversion is. All you have to do is type, for example, DE01H, hit enter, and it puts in the decimal number for you. Unfortunately, I can't display the data in hex, but just the way it is. Second run is the timer. This is the rate at which the command will get sent out in the message instruction. I have a little done bit in there, normally closed, such that it will automatically reset. We'll use this as a trigger. I can make this a little faster, a little slower, depending on the application. All right. In the third rung, now we have the message instruction. You can see the done bit from the timer on the beginning, so that's going to hit it every half a second. And then we have the message instruction itself, and let's just go through this setup. It really isn't as difficult as it looks. 500 CPU write, that's just the type of message instruction that we're going to use. N50 colon zero, this is where we assemble the instruction here on the rung number one. Okay, and the length is five. We saw all the five elements that are going to be used in the command. And then this is specific to device master. So what we've done is we've set up in the device master let's say an integer file that's specific to the port number. So we're using serial port one, so it's N11 colon zero. If we had a four port model, and let's say it had a serial port or, or R2100 connected to port four, we want to send the command there, we would put in instead N41 colon zero. If we had a device that was a socket connection, like an ethernet connection, we would start up in the N51 through N81. Just very simple, put it in there, and it helps the, the device master know for which port you want to send the information. And then the second tab is called multi-hop. This is just the IP address of the device master itself. So this, this is my program complete. See in the first rung, everything goes into N50 colon zero. So I can open it up. And my command's there. You can see the length five and then the five bytes. Now let's take a look. You got the timer here hitting it every half a second, so it looks good. And then the third rung, let's go into the message instruction itself. You can see N50 colon zero, length five, and then the N11 colon zero for the first serial port, the IP address of the device master. Now let's go into the response. Yeah, there it is. I've labeled all of the ports, beams, so beam zero, echo zero, beam one, echo one. Now I'm gonna take my hand and move it over it. So now it's a 700 millimeters, and put my hand over and I get uh, down to 81. So I move my hand back slowly, it's farther and farther away, and that's it. Thank you for watching this video. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to contact us and don't forget to like, share, or subscribe to our YouTube channel. Stay tuned for our next video and have a great day.